The Aleutian chain to me is sacred, especially as we were going further and further out the chain. The sea has a spiritual language that you don't hear on land. The Aleutian Island chain forms just over a thousand mile northern arc of the Pacific Ring of Fire, a tectonically active margin surrounding the Pacific Ocean. The island chain extends from the Alaska Peninsula westward to Russia and acts as a speed bump for typhoons moving northward into the Bering Sea. These storms can result in waves exceeding 50 feet, with wind speeds exceeding 120 miles an hour. All of these factors and many others make this region one of the most dynamic and rugged places on Earth. We have rivers and waterfalls that crash onto the beach, thousands and thousands of gallons every minute of every day from oversaturation of moss that covers all of our islands. The moss is thick. It's laying on top of the mountains and it's always causing fog and mist and clouds and rain. A truly incredible natural laboratory to conduct scientific research. Scientists aboard the Sekuliak in the summer of 2022 sought out to better understand the history of storms and their impacts in the Bering Sea to provide context to current and future conditions under climate change. While Western scientists have utilized various methods to research storms, such as the use of instruments and sediment cores, indigenous knowledge holders have for generations passed down their lived experiences, observations, and ways of knowing. I'm concerned about the lack of rain. Usually there would be a lot of water in here. The Sukuliak research team included an Unongok student. This is Kayla, Lisa and I's daughter. She grew up on boats and skiffs all her life out here in, on Alaska Dutch Harbor. As well as an elder with the goal to build a more holistic view of the Bering Sea storms and pair the Unangak way of knowing with the Western science data collection methods. Unangak elder Piyama Olaire shared her lived experience and ancestral knowledge with the crew aboard the Sekuliak. I'm an island girl. The ocean is me. That's my whole way of life. It's a part of everyday life. You can't separate it. Growing up, I was always in the water. Living on the sea is part of life. My brothers all went fishing, it's passed down. It's your food, it's your store, your dinner table. Always going down the beach and poking around in the tide pools and eat a sea urchin or... We're in Shagak Bay. Probably five or six different types of seaweed are pretty healthy. We've got bladderwrack, ribbon kelp, a lesser amount of bull kelp. Beach lettuce is so healthy, I want to eat it right now. There's cockle clams. We did see a couple of sea otters. Got some little tanner crab in there. For thousands of years, the Unak of the Aleutian Islands have developed deep connections to the land and sea that have enabled their culture to thrive under these extreme conditions. From the mastery of kayak building to the ingenuity of tools for hunting and fishing, the Unak are among the most adept at living harmoniously with their environment, especially considering the rugged terrain and extreme storms and weather. Our people of the Aleutian chain historically have been very resilient and adaptive. We've had to, living with the weather. We get some wind that other people might call hurricane or cyclone anywhere else in the world, but a 200 mile an hour wind, they still just call it wind. People adapt. They figure out what doesn't work and the building codes have to pay attention to the seismic load, make sure that the earthquake's not going to knock your house down, the wind load and blow your house down. We need to be more careful on what materials we're building our houses from. I have not seen a drought that I can recall in the Aleutians and to see the rivers have dried Hiking on the mountains the way I have this last couple weeks, to step on moss and to feel it's not spongy, it's crunchy and it slips away from the ground underneath it. Pretty horrifying to see such a change in the ecology of the bay and the land. 
There's so much fewer types of grasses, types of flowers. The absence of the seaweeds that I grew up with when we used to have so much underwater vegetation. And is there something that I can do as an indigenous person to help my land, to help my ocean? This is my dinner plate. This is what I'm feeding my children. How can I protect it? I'm the steward of this land. Have we missed our opportunity to turn the climate around for the salmon, the different species of seaweed that I grew up seeing? So much is absent already. Are we too late?